Hey Jazz, you ready for another bulk buy? Let's go and pick up a whole week's worth of stock at once. Welcome back guys. Before we get into the actual bulk deal, I thought today we'd talk a little bit about why we buy in bulk and how it sort of changed a lot of the way we do things and helped our business scale to where we are today. So I'm gonna talk about a couple tips and a couple reasons why we do bulk buys and hopefully you guys get a little bit of an idea and stick around to the end because we will show you a few things that we picked up in this bulk deal. So the first couple of reasons that we do bulk is number one, is the time it saves us in sourcing. So instead of us going around to probably a hundred op shops to find these sort of two to 300 items at a time, we can go to one place, it takes us a couple of hours, and we've got, as Jazz said, stock for a whole week, maybe even two to list rather than sort of flying around and trying to find all this stuff. Obviously we love going out thrifting and we do it on the regular, but these offset bulk buys really help us get that stock into the business without wasting our time trying to find it. And you never know if you're gonna find stuff in a thrift store or not. Whereas with a bulk buy, I know the stuff there and I can go there and grab it. The second part of bulk buys that is a little bit different to buying from op shops or garage sales is the buy-in price. Now, when you're in op shops and garage sales, it's not unusual to sort of find stuff that you can sort of 5X or 10X your original investment. When you go to bulk buys, unless you find a really good deal, you're probably more looking at like sort of three to 3.5 is probably the sweet spot. Probably not gonna make as big a profit, but you are getting a lot more stock. So we try and aim for that 3X whenever we do a bulk buy, trying to include things like our fees and our shipping into our cost so we know at the end of the day we can sort of double up our actual profit compared to what we spent also wanted to give you guys a couple tips when we're talking about bulk buyers it takes a little while to sort of get your head around bulk buyers and they don't just pop up everywhere so i wanted to help you sort of work through how you can potentially find these things. Obviously, we've built up a little bit of a social media profile, so people sort of contact us. And that's been a really great way for us to come across these deals when people are either closing down their eBay stores, they need to clear some room, or shops and that are closing down and they need to clear out their stock, liquidate their stock really quickly. So that's one little tip is, you know, use social medias to your advantage. If you don't want to get involved in social medias, which I absolutely understand is not for everyone, there are other ways. Tell people what you do. Tell your friends, tell your family. When you go op shopping, you build up those relationships with those managers. Talk to them about what you do. Obviously, not all of them are going to be receptive to you being a reseller, but quite a lot of them will actually be happy for you to come in and buy bulk lots of stuff to clear it out for them so they don't have to take up the space and maybe it saves them a bit of time as well. So that's tip number one. And tip number two is advertise on places like Facebook Marketplace and Gumtree. Now, Facebook Marketplace can be a bit tricky because if you've got other resellers in your area and they like to be a bit cheeky, they might report your item for not actually selling something. But if you post them into groups, like your marketplace groups, often people will leave them up there. They don't get taken down as much. And you can get some really good deals from that. We've, we've made some really good deals through Facebook Marketplace and advertising that we buy things. So give them an idea of what you buy. Write down sort of five or 10 items that you commonly buy. And often people will reach out to you and let you know that they have you know five or six items that they might want to get rid of. It's a great way to make money pretty quickly and not have to go sourcing for it. Now we're gonna get down there, we're gonna get into this stuff, have a little bit of a look around. We'll take you guys along and I will show you how this deal goes down and what we sort of expect to get out of it at the end. So a bit of context here guys, we're sort of looking through, having a little bit of a look around, breaking it down into sort of sections so we can kind of work out how much everything is worth. Well, another full car, so we'll get all this stuff out and uh, Jazz will give you a little bit of rundown. Yep. Step one when we buy a bulk lot is that it all comes straight into my workspace, which means there is absolutely no room for procrastination. We need to get working on this straight away. Strategy number two for getting it done is that we do not prioritize what we're listing. Everything here needs to be listed. So we're going to work through it by category so that we can batch things up and get it done quick. In the toys, we've got some models, some Bandai Pokemon down there. We've got some Funko vintage toys straight out of your childhood. And we've got a whole bunch of plush. We've actually got some cabbage patch in there, a little cabbage cat, um, Jim Henson toys. There's actually some specific tags on here that would be good to look out for. So Big Bird is on the Tyco tag. And Big Cookie Monster 
is actually on the, if I can show you properly, vintage applause tag. So that is another one to look out for in your plush. In our little box of mixed games, we've got the Mario case that's got the Mario DS and all its gadgets inside. That'll be a nice quick flip to get some of our investments straight back in the bank. And we've got some mixed games. Highlights are probably the Boulders Gate there and Jack and some that we can lot up with consoles when we get them. Just a couple of highlights and electronics. The Canon electronic typewriters are slowly coming into vogue. And this one is cool because of its chunky keys. And we also have some spare ink that's going to help selling that one. This Microsoft computer mouse is worth looking up because it is unavailable now. And also being new in box is really going to help us out with selling that one. And we always look up our Samsung VHS players. This one, there's no listed available on eBay, but that's not bad because when I went to sold listings, I could see that it's because every single one has sold. They go for about 80 to hundred dollars. And we have books from vintage comics and novels to Folio Society hardcovers. The Folio Society is so beautiful and so collectible. These will range between $30 and $100 books. Most of them are probably going to be around that $40 to $50 mark. Because we're a two-person team, Brad's going to grab one category, maybe toys, maybe books, maybe clothes, and work through all of those at once, starting those listings, and he'll save those all in drafts. Then he'll bring it over to my photo booth where I will take all the pictures and I'll send 20 listings live every day. When we're spending kind of thousands of dollars at a time, cash flow is super important, which is why we don't have a storage area. We're not in the business of storing unlisted stock. We get it up as soon as we can so that we can get that money straight back into our pocket. And we're selective with our bulk deals and how much we're paying versus the quality. So that with this deal, we know that we're listing 100% of this stock. None of it needs to be donated. But if we are doing a bulk deal where some of the stock is not as good, then we always have a strategy for moving that on quickly. Like we did with the bulk DVD lot where we took a bunch of it to auction. This is just a sample of the things that we got in this deal. There's way too much to show you in a video, but let us know in the comments below what is your favorite thing to buy in bulk and what's your best strategy for getting it listed.